Hello and welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. Today we are introducing our brand new set, Happy Harvest and its coordinating dies. And I can't wait to show you guys this one. It's so cute. So let's go ahead and stamp it out. Here we have this adorable little scarecrow. And then he's got his little crow buddies here. So there's three different crows in three different styles. We have two sunflowers, my absolute favorite flower and an open stem and also a solid stem. And you can even stamp the stems upside down and it gives a completely different look for your flower. Here we've got some corn stalks, a pumpkin and a smaller one, a little curly Q for the pumpkin and some two cute fall leaves. And then here we've got the corn which you can put all over those stalks or stamp separately. I think it would make a really cute background. And here we've got our little wagon filled with pumpkins, one of my favorite images from the set. A little heart and great sentiments. We have your amazing, many thanks, which is a sentiment I'm going to use on a lot of cards, and happy harvest. And of course, we have our exclamation point to add to the end of the phrases. And here I'm going to use my Copic markers to start coloring my scarecrow. And I have B34 and B39. They're kind of far apart from each other. So I am put, touching the light marker to the dark marker to help fill in those gaps. So you can see there I'm touching the light to the dark and trying to create a medium shade so that those two colors can blend together. That being said, I actually really like on these jeans kind of the dark outside. So the really dark border all the way around. I think it makes it look really cool. So once again, trying to blend it out and then just connect all that together. I'm going to add a little bit more of that shading. Once I saw that I really liked it around the edge, I kept adding it to more and more of the scarecrow. And then around his little pocket too. I really think that makes the pocket pop. Now I'm just adding a little shading by touching the light to the medium marker. A little more of that dark marker there to really make that little pocket pop on him. Now here I'm going to go ahead and start coloring his shirt. I've got two shades of red, but I actually really wanted it to be an even darker red than this, so I'll show you what I'm going to do in a second. But now I'll just blend uh, the dark to the light out to the edge there. And then here I decided just to color the whole shirt dark in the middle and then just blend it out to the outside edge there with the lighter marker. And then now I'm going to take this R39. It doesn't completely match, but it's a lot darker because I didn't have a darker red that matched. So what I'm doing is laying the R39 and then going over it with the R29 to make it look like it's the darker version of R29. And that seemed to work out pretty well actually and it really gave the shirt that dark worn look that I wanted. Now I'm coloring in his buttons. I thought that was a little too bright so I got a little bit darker of a marker and kind of made them more brassy looking. And now I can start coloring on all his little straw there. So I'm just doing some really simple two color shading just to add a little shadow of the straw coming out from his clothes. And then the straw there on his little, his little bangs there. <laughs> now I'll color the stick that he's on. And now I can start on his face. So I'm using this really light E00 and then just doing a little bit of darkness under the hat just for the shade of the hat on his face. And then a little shade around his nose too. Color his nose in with the same color that I used for the dark part of the hay and then give him some cute little rosy cheeks. Now I thought the pink was kind of standing out a little too much, so I'm going over it with that E00 color, the color I used for his face to kind of blend that pink out. I thought it would be fun to color his hat in kind of an olive green color, and I'm just using two markers here. I really like shading with just two markers. It's kind of where I have the most fun, because I really like touching the light marker to the dark marker to get that medium shade, so I think it's really fun to play with those. 
Now, as I finished coloring him, unfortunately, my camera completely freaked out and corrupted the footage of the rest of my coloring. I was so sad. I did everything I could to try to save it, but nothing worked. So if you guys want to see the coloring of everything, I would totally love to film a video again. Just let me know in the comments below if you'd like to, uh, to see a video of the coloring. But I am going to have a little close-up here of what I did with all the other characters. Now for the top crow, I used some neutral grays, but for the bottom two, I used warm grays. I ended up liking that so much better. I think he go, they go along much better with the scarecrow with the warm grays. And then for those sunflowers, I used Y32, Y35, and Y38, and I really love those for the sunflower colors. Now for the pumpkins, I used YR15 and YR18, and then for the tops, I used YG95, just some nice olive green. And for that cute little wagon, I used BG45 and BG49, and I touched that 45 marker, the light marker, to the dark marker to get that shading with that. And I really love that color with the orange of the pumpkins. I think it's beautiful. And then here on those little openings there, those little circles in the sunflower, I decided to take a white gel pen and fill those in. And I think that looks so cute and it really gives them kind of a little fun, dynamic look. Now here are the Happy Harvest dies and at those metal tabs I bent them apart to separate all of the dies. And then I can line the die up with my, my stamped image there and hold it in place with some low tack tape. I like to use post-it note tape. Run it through my die cut machine and reveal the cute little die cuts just like that. Oh, I just love him. He's so cute. And here you can see all of the die cut images. And I thought it would be fun to just play around with them and kind of decide what I wanted to do for my card. So I'm playing around with different little scene ideas here, trying to figure out what I want my cards to be with all of these cute colored and cut out images. I just love those little pumpkins together and the sunflowers are just so cute. Now here, I ended up loving that scene, so I cut a stitch square with one of my dies, and here I have some mermaid ink and a foam ink blending tool. And I wanted to create a really pretty light, kind of turquoisey blue sky. So I'm bringing that ink onto the card there, starting off of the card and then going onto it to get a really cool sky look. And I just love how pretty that mermaid is. It makes a really cool sky. So I'm just going to keep bringing that color on, and then next I'm going to take Peacock, which is kind of a darker turquoise, and bring that up around the edges just to add a little bit of dimension. So I'm just picking up a little bit of the ink and just bringing that on there just to give a little darkness at the bottom. I want it to be darker at the bottom and lighter at the top. And now I'll keep adding some Mermaid on just to kind of blend everything out. Next here, I have a grass die cut. I cut, I cut the grass and then I cut it with the same stitch square so it would have that beautiful stitch edge. And I'm using uh, the new fossilized amber distressing color, which is so pretty. And I thought it would look really cool for straw. Shari had given me that tip and I was like, ooh, I can't wait to try that. So it looks really cool. So I'm just blending that color on uh, all over the die cut. And now it's ready to layer and you'll see how pretty it is on that mermaid colored sky. Here I have our brand new dough ink pad, which is a really great kind of medium to light brown. And I'm going to stamp these cute little stalks there to kind of help create my scene. Stamp just one more. And now I can layer my amber grass on top. And then I can start creating my scene. So I've got my little scarecrow guy here in the middle. And then I went ahead and added my little crow there. And then layering him on a nice bright blue to coordinate with his jeans stitch square. Now I can add my little flying little crow there and the pumpkins because I wanted them to be off the edge a little bit. I thought that would look pretty cool. And then here I have some polka dotted jack-o'-lantern pa paper from our new Let's Polka in the Dark. And I have a 4x4 card base here. And I wanted to stamp my sentiment on the inside. I thought that would be kind of fun. So I put some two, two leaves there and the sentiment. I'm going to pick them up with my Misty tool and then stamp that right in the center. So I'm using some walnut ink, a nice dark brown. And now I have a sentiment on the inside of my card. Then I'm adding some foam tape to my cute little scarecrow scene here. And now I can layer it on top. And I just love the look of the pumpkins and the crow coming off the edges. And I think it's just a fun scene. And I like having the sentiment for the card along the inside too. Next, I really wanted to use that wagon. So I started creating a little scene here with our picket fence die and one of our stitch rectangles. So I cut the stitch rectangle out of some blue paper. 
And now I'm just gonna cut a little bit of green with the same rectangle because I want the stitched edge on the bottom, but I want the grass to be there too. So now it'll have the stitched edge along the grass line. And I'm gonna do the same thing with my picket fence die here. So now the stitch edge goes all the way around the card. Now I made a mistake. I glued down the fence without thinking. I had wanted to put the sunflowers behind it, so I just peeled it up, uh, and now I can add my sunflowers and then stick it right back down. Thank goodness I had used liquid glue because it gave me the time to peel it back up once I realized what I had done. So I peeled up the fence, now I can stick it back down, and my sunflowers are behind the fence. And I have two layers of grass, which I thought would look kind of cool and give it some extra dimension. And now I'm gonna stamp my sentiment before I start adding anything with foam adhesive. And I'm going to use the Missy tool again because it helps me keep my sentiments straight. Some black licorice ink, which is nice and bold. And my sentiments on there. And now I can add all of my little elements with uh, foam adhesive. So I've got my, my little rag in there and my two crows, which I think looks just so cute. And now I thought a nice orange to go along with the pumpkins would be a great border. So I just added that right along the edge and I think it really makes the pumpkins pop. And another little happy fall card all ready to go. And here you can see the two cards together. I don't know about you guys, but I am so ready for fall. These are just so cute and I cannot wait for fall to get here. So this is harvest season and it's coordinating dies. I absolutely love this set for fall. I love the cute and fun scenes that you can create with them and I can't wait to see what kind of clever scenes you guys come up with. So make sure to share them with us. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have an amazing day. Bye.